welcome to our first episode of The History of Tekken. The beginning of an ongoing series that'll cover one of the most popular fighting game franchises of all time. And like any proper fighting game storyline, the lore of the series is its characters and their crisscrossing paths. You always have your core conflicts throughout the series and then multiple fighters, each with their own motivations and their own history separate from the main conflict. Just to give a very general overview of the Tekken universe, which will get more fleshed out as we cover more characters. The world of Tekken is a world where corporations hold immense power, more power than some countries, complete with their own private armies and nefarious goals. The overall storyline focuses on the bloodline of the Mishima family and three men. Heihachi Mishima, the leader of the Mishima Zaibatsu Corporation, his son Kazuya Mishima, leader of G Corporation, and Kazuya's son, Jin Kazama. Kazuya and his bloodline possess a supernatural genetic abnormality known as the Devil Gene that allows them to transform into a dark and powerful devil form. The three men, grandfather, father, and son, are constantly at each other's throats, waging war, and sometimes the world suffers collateral damage over their blood feud. In order to test the world's greatest fighters, and for sometimes more nefarious reasons, the Mishima Zaibatsu has hosted a world-renowned fighting tournament called the King of Iron Fist multiple times. But the details of the Mishima clan feud is a story for another time. Today's focus will be the history of the original game that started it all, and the mysterious masked wrestler, the wall of impenetrable muscle, the Beast Priest, King. And of course you can't discuss the history of King without also covering Armor King. And a massive thank you and shout out to all of my Patreon members that make videos like these possible. If you'd like to support the channel, get your name up here on the screen with all the other greats, and get perks such as sneak peeks at upcoming content, detailed progress updates, access to the Discord exclusive channel, and early access to videos. Go to patreon.com forward slash gamerthumbtv or click the link in the description to get started. A tenacious will and a body of iron. This powerful pro wrestler takes his opponent's attacks and returns them with interest. If you spent time in the arcades of the 90s, you heard the name. You saw kids duking it out side by side. The glow from the CRT illuminating the dark corners of the arcade. The cabinet standing next to other fighting legends like Capcom Street Fighter and Midway's Mortal Kombat. The Namco developed Tekken was unavoidable. But before it became a full-fledged entry in the 3D fighting game arena, it started out as nothing more than a test. The year was 1993. The arcade industry was going strong and some developers had already cracked the code to make making a functional fighting game, further supporting their existing IPs with more sequels. That year, Mortal Kombat received its sequel, Mortal Kombat 2, and the Street Fighter 2 expansion, Super Street Fighter 2. But these games had something in common. They were 2D. The idea for a 3D fighting game was still in its infancy, and the first one released in October 1993 with Sega's Virtua Fighter. Namco then began internal testing to determine what was possible with their current technology. They created their own 3D character models and used similar texture mapping techniques that were used in their 1993 racing game Ridge Racer. Calling Sega's Virtua Fighter a success was an understatement. In 1993, it was considered a groundbreaking achievement that affected the entire video game industry. It basically created the 3D fighting game genre, and Namco sought to develop their own competitor Virtua Fighter. They devised the concept of a 3D fighter called Kamui, though they couldn't secure the trademark for the name and instead began working with the name Rave War. The game was planned for their Namco System 22 arcade board, the same one used for Ridge Racer. However, they learned that Sega was developing Virtual Fighter 2 for their new, more powerful Sega Model 2 board. Sony was developing their own console, the original PlayStation, and Namco met with them to review the specifications for their prototype. In the mid-90s, technical leaps would happen between arcade games with the development of new boards. Similar to how consoles get various upgrades throughout a single generation, the internal board was where all the power was. Namco and Sony together developed the Namco System 11, a 32-bit arcade board that was based off the PlayStation prototype where Rave War would live. 
It'd be the first game developed for the Namco System 11 board, and in 1994, Namco struck gold. They acquired several developers from Sega, developers that worked on the competition, Virtual Fighter. Virtual Fighter designer Saichi Ishii came on board as director of Rave War and envisioned a game with even more detailed textures than Virtual Fighter and double the frame rate. As development continued through 1994 to its conclusion, Rave War was shown publicly at the Amusement and Music Operators Association Expo in September, and the name was changed to Tekken. Although there are still remnants of the Rave War title left over, the character Martial Law is combos named after Rave War, and the title of the game can also be found on a car in the arcade version of Ridge Racer. The new name of Tekken was much easier to say in multiple languages, and it represented the competition in the game's story, the King of Iron Fist Tournament. The word Tetsu in Japanese represented iron, the word Ken, fist. The two combined into Tekken. By the end of 1994, Tekken was ready to launch. It released in arcades on September 21st, 1994 in Japan, and worldwide in December of 1994. In early 1995, they marketed the arcade across America, with a promotional tour in 12 different cities with several tournaments for gamers to participate in. Since Tekken was developed for a new arcade board that was so similar to the PlayStation, porting it to the home console presented no trouble, resulting in one of the best arcade-to-home translations of the time. Although the hardware was slightly weaker than the arcade. The character animations had to be removed from the fighter select screen, but otherwise, it was incredibly faithful to the arcade version. Tekken was an immediate success upon release, landing on the PlayStation in Japan on March 31st, 1995, and North America on November 8th, 1995. 3D fighters were now the future that other franchises would eventually dip their toes into. Reviews praised the game's graphics and gameplay, comparing its playability to Virtual Fighter, and Namco's marketing strategy made sure the game was in plenty of arcade locations. It was promoted as the cheaper alternative to arcade owners, compared to Sega's Virtual Fighter 2, which was made on newer hardware, therefore more expensive to purchase. It worked. By 1995, Tekken was in fourth place in Japan for highest grossing arcade game. Ahead of it was Virtual Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha, and Night Warriors, Darkstalkers Revenge. And the US home console version sold almost 800,000 units. Tekken was a success, and it was here to stay. You win! Tekken in 2024 has a huge legacy of memorable characters, but when the series was being developed, the initial cast looked very different from the ones in the final version, including a man wearing a sort of walrus suit and scientists that could transform into a giant hulking man. Does that sound familiar? King and Armor King, the main subjects of this video, are fan favorites, instantly recognizable as part of the Tekken universe to even those that aren't huge fans. They're big, bulky luchadors, wrestlers equipped with jaguar masks, and eventually, in the story, multiple identities. Tekken characters usually speak in whatever the main language of their country is with subtitles at the bottom. King and Armor King, however, growl to communicate. Starting with King, his design was inspired mainly by two wrestlers, the Japanese pro wrestler Satoru Sayama that's gone by several Tiger-inspired names, such as Tiger Mask, Tiger King, Super Tiger, influencing the Jaguar mask that King uses. And for Mexico, we have Frey Tormenta, a luchador from Mexico that's also a priest, inspiring King's religious undertones. He also used his wrestling career to support an orphanage, and one of the children from his orphanage took up his mantle when he retired. This is all going to sound very familiar later in this video. King's moves were also references to other real-life wrestling legends, including The Undertaker and Kane's Tombstone Piledriver, among many others. Combining all of these elements together gives us King. And the counterpart to King and Tekken is Armor King, who originally was known as Black King while Tekken was in development. While having obvious similarities to King, he was also inspired by real-life wrestlers that took the mantle of Black Tiger, a persona used by different performers over the years. In New Japan Pro Wrestling, Black Tiger was the opponent of Tiger Mask, and he was trained by the criminal Tiger's Cave organization that sought revenge on Tiger Mask. Some of the most influential depictions used for Armor King were British professional wrestler Mark Rocco's depiction of Black Tiger and Mexican wrestler Eddie Guerrero's Black Tiger. 
While Armor King's shoulder pads share a striking similarity to the Road Warriors, King is one of the characters that has appeared in just about everything Tekken, often being depicted as an incredible powerhouse of muscle, including the Kings appearing in the non-canon entry, Namco X Capcom, working together with Felicia where she thinks they're real felines. And King appears in the Netflix series where he takes down several opponents in the King of Iron Fist tournament, and he seems unstoppable. In his in-game story, before the events of the original Tekken, King was a young orphan growing up in the tough life of the streets. Such a life led to multiple fights, and in one of those conflicts, King was horribly injured and near death. He collapsed in front of a monastery, and he was rescued by the priest inside. From that day forward, King decided to live a new life. He left behind his old ways, became a Catholic priest, and devised dreams of building an orphanage to save children from the streets. Perhaps he could save a child from the same turbulent life that almost claimed his. In time, King built an orphanage for children that needed a home, but running an orphanage was expensive and funds were low. In response, King returned to his fighting ways in a much more productive environment. He created a jaguar mask, became a luchador, and donned the identity of King, the Beast Priest and he used his funds from wrestling matches to support the orphanage. Early in his career, King found his rival, another wrestler wearing a jaguar mask that called himself Armor King. While the pair enjoyed their rivalry, a tragic accident occurred during one of their matches. King unintentionally crushed Armor King's left eye. After the incident and Armor King's recovery, both men continued their wrestling career, and Armor King decorated his mask to represent his now permanent injury. King won multiple times, and his wrestling career was growing rapidly. However, Armor King's career didn't fare as well. The injury to his eye caused multiple losses and his career began plummeting. One day, both fighters heard of a new fighting tournament sponsored by the Mishima Zaibatsu's Heihachi Mishima. The fighter that won the tournament would win a large cash prize and the title of King of Iron Fist, with Heihachi himself as the final opponent. King entered the tournament in the hopes of winning enough money to continue supporting his orphanage. An armor King entered in order to defeat King, destroy his career, and reclaim his former glory. In the end, King defeated Armor King, but didn't win the tournament. He placed third, winning enough prize money to continue supporting his orphanage for a time. Heihachi's son Kazuya Mishima won the tournament, defeating his father and throwing him off the side of a cliff, just like his father had done to him when he was five years old. After that, Kazuya took over the Mishima Saibatsu. After his third place victory in the tournament, King and Armor King gained a mutual respect for each other's strength, and the two set their rivalry aside, becoming close friends and sparring partners. But in time, tragedy would strike King. His orphanage was struggling financially as the money from his winnings began to run out, and a child from the orphanage passed away while in his care. This sequence of events drove King back to the streets, and he drowned himself in alcohol. He was at the lowest point of his life. Armor King became concerned for King's well-being and reached out to him. Two years after the first King of Iron Fist tournament, Kazuya Mishima announced the second King of Iron Fist. Before the events of Tekken 2, Armor King convinced King to leave his alcoholism and depression behind. It was time to regain his strength and compete in the second tournament. The two wrestlers trained together, and King fully recovered. Once again, he entered with the intention of funding the orphanage with the prize money, and Armor King desired a rematch with his friend. This time, the results of their battle would be different. <laughs> Armor King defeated King in a stunning victory, and King returned to the orphanage in shame during the dark early hours of Christmas morning, watching an orphanage worker with the children. But the children didn't care that King lost, they still loved him and everything he did for them.
the grand champion of the second tournament was a Hachi Mishima. He mysteriously had survived and in turn threw his son Kazuya into an active volcano and regained his rightful place as leader of the Mishima Zaibatsu. King began teaching the children the orphanage's skills as a means of self-defense and continued funding the orphanage with his wrestling career. And Armor King continued hiding a deep secret. During his various medical appointments, it was discovered that he had an undisclosed and serious heart condition. Wrestling was possibly pushing his condition to critical levels, but the title of Armor King had a reputation that he was determined to maintain. Over the next 15 years, Heihachi established his own private military force that was loyal to the Mishima Zaibatsu, meant to protect the company and its interests, the Tekken Force. Heihachi used the Tekken Force to search the world for any hidden secrets that could advance his own interests. Stories from Mexico depicted an ancient creature called Ogre that was worshipped by the Aztecs as the god of fighting, and the Tekken Force was sent on an excavation mission deep in Mexico to investigate if the stories had any truth to them. It happened to be the location where the god of fighting Ogre was in a deep slumber. The Tekken Force had awakened it. The creature was believed to be from another world, a biological weapon that was left behind on Earth by another civilization, and it was drawn to powerful warriors. Ogre left the ruins in Mexico and began searching for fighters to confront. Four years before the events of Tekken 3, King, the legendary beast priest, was one of the many fighters attacked. Ogre was a monster without mercy, and King died in the fight. Heihachi began monitoring Ogre's activities and wished to draw him out in order to somehow harness his power. The children in King's orphanage were devastated that he was gone, and one of the children raised there was now a young man. He decided to step up and honor the man that gave him a home throughout his childhood. He donned the iconic jaguar mask, used the self-defense techniques King taught him, and imitated his moves in order to support the orphanage through wrestling. And quick note, I'll refer to this new King as King 2 from here on out. King 2's wrestling career began as absolute failures. While he could imitate King's moves from watching his matches, he had no real experience and lost every match that he entered, until Armor King decided to honor his old friend King 1. Armor King trained King 2 and not only became a mentor, he became the equivalent of a father figure to the young man. King 2 trained under Armor King for four years and matured into a skilled wrestler, perhaps even surpassing the original King. One day Armor King revealed the truth behind King's death at the hands of the mysterious ogre and King 2 burned with the desire to avenge him. Meanwhile Heihachi announced the King of Iron Fist Tournament 3, a ploy to gather the world's strongest fighters in an attempt to attract and capture Ogre. King 2 entered with the intention of confronting and destroying Ogre. Unfortunately, King wouldn't be the one to destroy it. He performed well in the tournament, but still lost. American fighter Paul Phoenix defeated Ogre, in return home believing himself to be the third King of Iron Fist champion. But Ogre mutated into a horrific true form before being defeated by a new contestant. Before his death in the second tournament, Kazuya fathered a child with another fighter, Jun Kazama. She disappeared after confronting Ogre. Jun and Kazuya's son, Jin Kazama, killed True Ogre, and his devil gene awakened within him after his grandfather betrayed him. Jin now had extreme power with his devil form, and Eihachi returned to the Mishima Zaibatsu empty-handed. King and Armor King also appeared in the events of Tekken Tag Tournament, fighting against the entity Unknown. However, that game is considered a non-canon entry. After the events of Tekken 3, King 2 continued building his wrestling reputation and discovered Armor King's debilitating condition. More loss would affect the legend of the kings at the hands of an Australian Valley Tudo fighter named Craig Marduk. After being ejected from the sport over a scandal, Marduk was bitter and angry. In a night of drunken rage in Arizona, he participated in a violent bar fight and a good Samaritan stepped in to try and de-escalate the situation. Marduk attacked him and unintentionally killed him. The victim was Armor King. His medical condition weakened him to the point where he could barely defend himself. Marduk was arrested for the killing and was found guilty of manslaughter since it wasn't an intentional target of murder. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison. 
King Two had lost both the man that gave him a home and his mentor. He once again desired for revenge, but justice had already been served. The man that killed Armor King was already behind bars. Two years later, Heihachi discovered that G Corporation, a company involved in biogenetic research, had resurrected his son Kazuya, and Kazuya desired to destroy Heihachi and the Mishima Zaibatsu. In a trap to draw Kazuya out from the shadows, Heihachi announced the fourth King of Iron Fist tournament, with the prize being ownership of the Mishima Zaibatsu. King 2 used the opportunity to enact his revenge against Marduk. Armor King was murdered. King swore upon Armor King's grave that he would seek revenge against the man responsible for his mentor's death. The murderer was serving time in an Arizona state penitentiary. With the money he earned from professional wrestling tournaments, King arranged for the murderer's release. King then sent him a plane ticket and an article about the King of Iron Fist Tournament 4. With his plans in motion, King headed for the tournament to await his sworn enemy, the Vali Tudo fighter. Both men participated and faced each other during the events of Tekken 4. King 2 brutalized Marduk and injured him so badly that he was sent to the hospital to recover from his injuries. But King 2's revenge wasn't complete. He would take the life of Marduk just as Marduk had taken Armor King's life. <laughs> with the spirit of two champions. After beating Craig Marduk, he followed Marduk to the hospital to kill him. Then he realized revenge was not the answer. After seeing a picture of Marduk's elderly parents, King Two realized that Marduk also had a family that loved him and he had no desire to cause any more pain. For now, he would leave at peace with his decision. At the end of the fourth tournament, Heihachi, Kazuya, and Jin faced each other. The final bouts were three generations in combat, until Jin's devil power activated and he fled. Then Jack-4 robots from G Corporation attempted to assassinate Kazuya in an act of betrayal. He escaped with his life, but he left Heihachi behind. believed Heihachi was finally dead. Soon after, someone took over the Mishima Zaibatsu from the shadows, with Heihachi missing in action. It was Heihachi's father, Jinpachi Mishima, the founder of the Mishima Zaibatsu. As a younger man, Heihachi took control of the company from Jinpachi and imprisoned him under the family temple where he succumbed to starvation. 
Eventually, a vengeful spirit possessed and resurrected Jinpachi. Once the temple was destroyed from the G Corporation attack, Jinpachi was free and regained control of the company that he founded. But the vengeful spirit inside Jinpachi was gaining power, and he desired to be freed from its grasp before it took complete control. Jinpachi announced the fifth King of Iron Fist tournament in the hopes that a strong warrior could end him. During the events of Tekken 5, Marduk healed from his injuries, and he returned to Valley Tudo fighting. Then King 2 witnessed the ultimate offense. Marduk was taunting him with a replica of Armor King's mask. Later, King heard Marduk challenged him to a rematch wearing the Black Jaguar's mask. I won't let him disgrace my master, says King. They will settle their score in the King of Iron Fist Tournament 5. The challenge was issued. Marduk and King 2 would settle their score in a winner-takes-all match during the King of Iron Fist. While progressing through the tournament, King 2 encountered another young contestant, Julia Chang, who urged King 2 to not seek revenge, but he ignored her, promptly defeated her, and pushed forward towards Marduk. So, you showed up! I've changed my ways! I'll take you down fair and square! In their final confrontation, King dominated Marduk, but won the fight fairly without anger. In an attempt to end the cycle of tragedy and revenge, both men shook hands and put the past behind them. You win! You can do it! In the end of the tournament, it was Jin Kazama that faced his great-grandfather Jinpachi Mishima and freed him from his shackles with his destruction. Then Jin became the head of the Mishima Zaibatsu. In the ultimate act of reconciliation, King 2 and Marduk began developing a friendship and became a tag team wrestling powerhouse. but the past would return to haunt them. Once Marduk returned to the waiting room, he experienced the impossible. He was attacked by someone that looked exactly like Armor King, and while he recovered, he recounted the story to King Two. Somehow, Armor King was alive. The events of Street Fighter Cross Tekken involving a mysterious artifact are non-canon to the overall Tekken story, but it does have some canon elements to King and Marduk's story, involving their search to solve the mystery of Armor King's return. King and Marduk continue to search for the man resembling Armor King. Rumors persist that a man that looked like King's former mentor has boarded a ship bound for the Antarctic. 
However, whether that information is credible or not is another story. The entire Antarctic is on high alert due to the news of the box found in the media lab. And as such, ordinary civilians cannot travel to the continent. Unable to give up just yet, King and Marta decide to somehow infiltrate the Antarctic to continue the search. I guess there's only one way to make sure, huh? Let's go, King! During the events of Tekken 6, the world fell into chaos. Jin led the Mishima Zaibatsu and Kazuya had taken over G Corporation, turning it into a powerful military force. An ancient evil Azazel, the source of the devil gene, bestowed upon some humans throughout history in order for them to become its servants on Earth, was threatening to return. The creature was communicating with Jin telepathically, confirming that the world was doomed. Once the world was filled with enough negative energy, it would return in physical form and destroy it all. In response, Jin decided to help resurrect Azazel in order to destroy it, and declared war on the rest of the world. It was a necessary evil to be able to confront it. Only by becoming the world's most hated warmonger could he protect everyone. The Mishima's war against the world caused much pain and suffering and became an obstacle to causing his own plans of world domination. He placed a bounty on his son's head, and Jin declared the sixth King of Iron Fist tournament in an effort to create more energy for Azazel's resurrection, and to end the threat of his father. During the events of Tekken 6, King 2 and Marduk entered the tournament together in order to draw out and reveal Armor King, but Armor King never responded to their challenge. He was busy assisting test subjects escape from Kazuya's G Corporation. Eventually, the truth was revealed when King 2 discovered a hidden photograph in the home of Armor King, depicting two Armor Kings. Unknown to him, there were always two, and Armor King had his secrets. The mantle of Armor King was a collective title shared by two brothers. This new Armor King 2 was Armor King 1's younger brother. In the meantime, Marduk began digging up Armor King 1's grave to find out if he had somehow resurrected. He should be dead. Armor King 2's body was still in its resting place, and he revealed himself to Marduk as the younger brother. Armor King 2 was bent on revenge against Marduk and attacked him. As a result of their confrontation, both Marduk and Armor King 2 were critically injured and hospitalized. In the end of Tekken 6, Jin successfully resurrected Azazel and defeated it, and it was sealed inside the arm of the spiritually powered astrologist Zafina. The world had been saved at the cost of countless lives, and Jin Kazama's reputation. During the events of Tekken 7, Heihachi Mishima returned, having survived the explosion that the world believed had killed him. 
with Jin Kazama missing after his battle with Azazel, Heihachi regained control of the Mishima Zaibatsu and declared the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7 in a final attempt to end the threat of his son Kazuya. King 2 decided to enter with the motivation of using the prize money to pay for both Marduk and Armor King 2's medical treatments, and to support the orphanage they came from. King 2 was also trying to broker a peace between the two men. During the tournament, King 2 faced off against a Jack 7 robot and defeated it. In the end of the tournament, Heihachi and Kazuya faced each other, and Heihachi finally lost his life to his son with a forceful impact to the chest. Then Kazuya tossed him into a volcano. King 2, in an attempt to broker a peace treaty between Marduk and Armor King 2, proposed a solution. They would face each other in a fair retirement match once they both recovered. If Marduk lost, he would retire from fighting. If Armor King 2 lost, he would give up the Jaguar mask and leave the identity of Armor King 2 behind. They agreed to the terms, but the results of their matches have remained undecided. King 2 and Armor King 2 also appeared during the events of Tekken Tag Tournament 2, but that game is also considered non-canon. In the canon story, after the events of Tekken 7, the world was still in turmoil. Azazel was no longer a threat, but Kazuya saw an opening to begin his own plans for world domination. Jin was recovered, determined to face and end his father, and the threat the machine of Bloodline and its devil powers posed to the world. During the events of Tekken 8, Kazuya publicly revealed his devil powers, and he was completely unrestrained. He announced that G Corporation would hold the 8th King of Iron Fist tournament in order to determine what countries would have a place in his new world. The strong would be rewarded, and the losing countries would face extreme sanctions placed upon them. King 2 entered to ensure the safety of the orphanage and claim the title of King of Iron Fist. He was pitted against British boxer Steve Fox. The fighters will battle for personal glory and the fate of their countries. The battle to decide the ranks of the new world begins now! that rescues children from all over the world. However, due to the war between G Corporation and the Mishima Zaibatsu, the orphanage was already well beyond capacity. The troubled wrestler then remembered the recently announced the King of Iron Fist Tournament and came up with a plan. In order to find collaborators for his project, King put his name forward for the tournament. That wall of muscle can't stop me! Hey, come on! Now this is what I call fun! 
King 2 won his fight and became aware that the entire tournament was a ruse by Kazuya to unleash Azazel and absorb his powers. As G Corporation and the rest of the world went to war, King 2 returned to fight alongside Jin and the other fighters standing against Kazuya's forces. King 2 may have been a simple wrestler, but the fate of the world hung in the balance, and the orphanage would be needed now more than ever. The explosive power of King 2 was unleashed, and friends and enemy alike were amazed by his strength. In the end, Jin ultimately defeated Kazuya and cleansed his bloodline of the Devil Gene. The world was finally at peace, and King 2 challenged Steve Fox to a rematch for charity. What? Did you come to rub it in? Or do you still want to fight? The Mixed Martial Arts Special Charity Match is about to begin! King Steve Fox. There's the bell to start the match! Ooh, Steve rushes in right off the bat! King reacts instinctively, but here comes the Snake Charmer! This feels more like a real fight than a charity match! Get ready to fly! A flurry of combos from Steve! King shows off some clever report though! It's a round-out body press! A roar from King! Have the table turned! But Steve counters! Ooh, he intercepts it with an arm whip! King is about to finish it! Hey, come on! What? Steve's back on the feet! There it is! The Tomahawk! It's a It would take some time for the world to repair the damage caused by what felt like endless wars, but in the meantime, King 2 would do his part, and he helped run a soup kitchen in New York. And that is the story of Tekken and the Kings.